But let's kind of do like an adrenal blood sugar kind of one-on-one physiology review for people just kind of coming into this. So your adrenal glands produce a hormone called cortisol, right? Which is a glucocorticosteroid, big word, right? The first half of that word is gluco, meaning it helps pertain to blood sugar and energy. And so the more your blood sugar perturbates goes up and down, the more hormones have to be produced to buffer the highs and lows. So the more we keep our hormones snaking along or we keep our blood sugar, let's say in this example, snaking along or stress snaking along throughout the day without big up and down spikes, our hormones are called to the rescue far less. So if I eat, let's say one, I'm not eating at all. Let's say I'm fasting, right? And I'm not really good at being fat adapted. Your blood sugar is going to drop. And when your blood sugar drops, that creates a stress response. The first thing that happens on this low blood sugar drop is going to be a spike of epinephrine or, or adrenaline, right? So epinephrine or adrenaline is like the key catalyst to wake up and call cortisol. So you get this epinephrine or adrenaline or catecholamine surge. Again, they are all the same thing. You have epinephrine, norepinephrine. You have adrenaline, you have noradrenaline. You have catecholamines. They're all the exact same thing, same name. They're just meant to confuse people. So just kind of put that out there. If I use these words, they're hundred percent interchangeable. Okay. So you're going to have this surge in adrenaline and that's going to bring up your blood sugar. When it brings that blood sugar up, this is when you may feel anxious, heart palpitations. This is maybe when you get a little bit dizzy, nervous, sleepless, irritable, right? Sweating, you know? So when you start to when you're on this blood sugar roller coaster, when this blood sugar drops and it starts to come back up, you may have symptoms that make you not feel that well. And so then of course, what comes up after that adrenaline surge is then cortisol is now going to help bring it up the rest of the way. So think of um, adrenaline as the, it's the, it's the first responder, right? It's, it's the person on the operator line, getting the police ready to come to your home. And then the police that come 10, 20 minutes later, that's cortisol. Okay. They come a little bit later to the show. And so that's important. So when you understand your physiology, that's, that's good. The next component is when your blood sugar goes back up on the high side, that's where you make a whole bunch of insulin. And so insulin can make you feel tired. It can make you feel fatigued. Insulin activates a lot of lipogenesis. That's fat storing. Lipo meaning fat, genesis creating. And so when you start to have, when you're on a blood sugar roller coaster of high to low blood sugar, okay, this creates this high level of insulin, a lot of lipogenesis that creates fatigue. And then of course, when you have a high level of insulin, that brings your blood sugar back down because insulin's opening up the cells, trying to get blood sugar into the cells to either burn it or store it. And if you're not active and your cells are already full of glycogen and you're not actively doing something like walking or running or lifting, guess what? Your body then shunts and partitions that fuel into the storing phase. So if you're active, great, you'll burn it. If you have muscles that have glycogen storage, you'll convert it to glycogen, which is glucose storage, sugar storage. And if those two capacities are, are tapped, then we start going to fat storage, starts going more to lipogenesis. So we're on this blood sugar roller coaster. So high blood sugar up, High blood sugar up, a lot of insulin drops it down, right? Then we have this, you know, this really high drop, high to low drop. This then stimulates a lot of adrenaline, catecholamines, and then cortisol in the up. This is called reactive hypoglycemia. And then the other type of glycemia issue that we're going to see is going to be usually fasting too much, not eating enough, low calorie diets, skipping meals. That's more like this. That's your blood sugar is like this, and it just starts to drop into this hypo category, you know, maybe below 75. One goes up first, that's the reactive. It's reacting, going high and then dropping. That's reactive hypoglycemia. That's typically gonna happen due to poor diet, too much sugar, too much carbs, not enough protein, not enough fat. And then we have just general run of the mill hypoglycemia, usually from poor meal timing, skipping meals, too much fasting, typically low calorie dieting. And again, if you're doing a lot of intermittent fasting, but you're low calorie in general throughout the day, that can easily drive low blood sugar too.